Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and this, I think, is going to be an eye-opener on Gog like you've never, ever considered Gog before. A lot of people trying to identify who Gog really is, and uh, it didn't start off this way uh, as far as this video that I was preparing here. I actually was preparing this for Patreon, and the more that this information began to evolve, I realized I can't even share it on Patreon. It's that sensitive of information. Uh, Patreon would take this video down, take our channel down, the whole works, it would all be over. All right, but <clears throat> um, this is a vital subject and it's something you need to be aware of. So I'm going to share that with you guys here. What started this? So this is why I looked at this being a Patreon video. The whole issue about Gog, uh, uh, the Gog of Magog War, so to speak. That actually came from the information that um, uh, I was getting out of Washington there that the CIA considers Turkey to be the land of Magog. And that it, they believe literally, the, you know, and when I say the CIA, these are the, his, the historians that work for the CIA. We have groups there that work on different languages, things like that. They do the research. And uh, they uh, had sent me a message, uh, uh, not the CIA per se, but the uh, people there in Washington from the information that they were getting from the CIA report there that Turkey is the land of Magog. It is where Satan's seat is. This is what they sent me. And then, of course, they wanted my input on that. Uh, and, uh, and I mentioned to them, yes, when it comes to uh, historically speaking, we know that Magog was in the land of modern day Turkey. Uh, and then I really began to think about how that uh, when it comes to the war in Ukraine and the corruption that's going on there uh, and that Zelensky's thugs are selling uh, American-made equipment on the black market and, uh, and, and uh, I was told initially that Turkey is one of the main buyers of that equipment. And then I began to look up different types of things that are going on. This one here from the uh, USA Supreme. Uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukraines are selling U.S. heavy-duty arms on the black market. Uh, can take out a tank helicopter at a discount price of 30000 uh, Well, that's the discount. The discount is $30,000 less. About 160000 for one of these particular uh, uh, FGM-148 Javelins there that they're selling. And... So these are going into Northern Africa. They're saying also over into Idlib. Uh, uh, and of course, anybody knows anything about Idlib, this is Turkey's stronghold, it is in Syria in the little province of Idlib, near the, uh, actually near the Turkish border, in fact, uh, to the uh, west there, northwest of Syria. So I, I was looking at that, and of course, I see the different articles that are coming out. This one on Sputnik, don't ask foreign weapons being supplied to the Ukraine, including the Javelin anti-tank systems are sold on the black market, in particular to Africa, uh, uh, they mention as well. Uh, again, you see more and more of this popping up. And as I looked at that, I thought to myself, well, if the CIA is looking at Turkey being the, uh, the seat of Satan, if they look at that as being Magog, uh, and they look at the Gog of Magog war, I can see why they would want to make sure these arms are going into Turkey so that when they create this war against Israel in the near future, it will appear as if the Gog of Magog battle has taken place and Turkey will be involved. Uh, Iran would be involved. They even want to say that Russia is part of the Gog of Magog war there. So all this is happening and all this is being prepared for a battle in the not so distant future. But so I decided, OK, so I'm going to really I really decided to go. And uh, because, of course, I'm being asked about this, uh, they wanted to get my input on that. So I began again to research the Dead Sea Scrolls, research what do we, what do we have written about Gog of Magog battle. And as a result, I come across some stories startling, I mean, startling 
uh, conclusions on Gog of Magog. Now I want to share this one here with you here in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, if you actually had the, the uh, this is from uh, superbook.org where I have the Dead Sea Scrolls where I'm able to um, uh, use this as one of the sources that I'm able to look at, page 156. And uh, I'm going to scroll up so you can see it's 1QM is the particular Dead Sea Scroll fragment that we're looking at, X uh, dash X uh, one or 10 dash 10 uh, 11 uh, in Roman numerals there and we're in the second paragraph uh, this is the here you go right here this is your Hebrew version of that and we'll drop down here to read this for a moment here for the battle is yours with the might of your hand their corpses have been torn to pieces with no one to bury them Goliath from Gath and Gilant and, and, and uh, Gilant giant, you delivered into the hands of David, your servant, for he trusted in your powerful name and not in the sword or spear, for the battle is yours. The Philistines you humiliated many times for your holy name. By the hand of our kings beside you, you saved us many times, thanks to your mercy, and not by our own deeds, but by which we did wrong, nor by our sinful actions, for the battle is yours, and from you that power comes, and from our own being. It is not our might nor power of our own hands which performs these marvels, except by your great strength, by your mighty deeds. Thus you taught us from ancient times, saying, and then he quotes the book of Numbers, a star will depart from Jacob. A scepter will be raised in Israel. I will smash the temples of Moab. I will destroy all the sons of Seth. I will come down from Jacob and it will exterminate the remnant of the city. The enemy will be its possessions and Israel will perform feats by the hand of your anointed ones. Seers and decrees, you taught us the times of the wars of your hands to fight, to be glorious over our enemies to fell the hordes of Belial, the seven peoples of futility, by the hand of the poor of those you saved with strength and success towards wonderful power, so that melting heart became uh, a door to, to hope. You shall treat them like Pharaoh, like the officers of the chariots of the Red Sea, the stricken of the spirit. You shall set aflame like a torch of fire and straw, devouring wickedness without ceasing until the sin has been consumed from old you foretold us appointed times of the power your hand against the sword uh, uh again excuse me against the kidim saying and they quote isaiah assure will fall by the sword uh, not of a man the sword of a human being will devour it for delivering the hands of the poor the enemies of the countries in the hand of the of those that are prone dust and to fail the power ones of the nations to return to to the reward uh, sin of their guilty heads. All right, now, uh, I probably read more than what I really needed to read here. The point is, is they're quoting in Numbers chapter 24 the prophecy of Jesus Christ when it talks about a star will depart from Jacob. A scepter will be raised in Israel. But notice what it says, and it will smash the temples of Moab and will destroy all the sons of Seth. Now, I used to be kind of bothered by this when it said the sons of Seth, because Seth was the righteous seed of, Ab uh, excuse me, of, uh, of Adam and Eve after Cain was killed by Abel. But then, as by, I really believe divine providence, as I've unraveled what I have unraveled today, I realize that in this regard here, it's not talking about the divine sons of Seth, but rather a different group all together. Okay, so, you know, as I said, you know, it bothered me because of the issue of Seth here. And, um, but then as I begin to do the research, I begin to understand exactly why. Uh, Seth is included in this here. Now, we also have, let me just pull this one up here. Um, this is from 11Q13. And um, 
then or that, that one actually that's dealing with uh, the, the mountains uh, let me go back to where we have here Gog and let me find real quick all right the one part that I forgot to bring okay okay I got I got it now all right so as we read in there okay as we're going down and uh, you know it goes it continues let me just go ahead and continue on so yeah there was a reason why I did so I sure would fall by the sword uh, of not of a man the sword not of a human being will devour it now that's interesting in itself a sure or what we call it Syria will fall by the sword of not a man the sword of not a human being will devour it that's pretty profound friends look at that for you will deliver into the hands of the poor the enemies of all the countries in the hand of those prone of the dust in order to fell the powerful ones of the nations wow to return the reward of sin of their guilty heads and to pronounce the justice of your truthful judgment on every son of man to make an everlasting name for yourself among the peoples the wars in order to show yourself great and holy in the eyes of the remainder of the peoples so comma so you have to drop down it continues on that they know now there's a blank spot you shall carry out sentence on Gog and all his gathering that has gathered to him Now, if you paid attention to what I just read, Gog is coming down, but Ashur will fall by the sword of not a man. And they're quote, it's literally quoting right out of Isaiah 31 8. Let's just see out of curiosity. All right, out of curiosity, let's go to the biblical uh, side. Let's see if the Isaiah that we have is saying that particular statement um i'm just curious myself then shall assure fall with the sword not yep not of a man and the sword not of men shall devour him then the fall assured becharev okay there's your sword and a sword lo ish Vechaev lo Adam. And a sword not of man or human in this case here. Ish is a man. Adam being like the son of man or Adam, you know, Adam said. To a chalunu. It's going to, literally, the word is eat him or eat them in this case here. I mean, this is a supernatural battle that you're looking at taking place here that they're quoting from out of Isaiah. But in, but now the Dead Sea Scrolls goes on to tell you, as you re, as I said, you continue down, you shall carry out sentence on Gog and all his gathering that is gathered to him. This is why I've told you guys before, Gog of Magog battle is not necessarily just an earthly battle. It's, it's, it's going to go outside the realms of an earthly battle. Now, there's something I want to remind you of. Let me see if I can find this here. Matthew. Not the part about where Jesus says to the Pharisees, you're a bunch of serpents in verse 33, Matthew chapter 23, verse 33, but verse 31 this time. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Um, that's still... Fill you up the measure of your fathers. I'm actually looking for a different one instead of that one. Where was it? Okay, that's, that's not the one I'm looking for. Hang on one second. Maybe it's in Revelation. Yeah, it's actually in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Synagogue of Satan. Now, 
What I'm about to tell you, I am sure I'm probably not the first one to say this, but, and maybe I am, I don't know. I don't know. I've not done any research to see, but it's what really became pressed strongly on my heart as I was preparing this video. Because of the fact of this battle, the one thing that kept coming to my mind is the word synagogue. I mean, after all, in the word synagogue, you have the word gog. And so I decided to really begin to look at this because I knew that Jesus spoke about them being the synagogue of Satan, the Pharisees. I knew that we're dealing with, when it comes to the Gog of Magog war, we're dealing with a very unusual type of battle that takes place here. As we just read from Isaiah, we're dealing with a battle that is not even human. And, and it is typed in with Gog, not in the Isaiah scripture, but in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they do link the two together. And not only do they link the two together, but interestingly enough, early on though, they also link Jesus, the prophecy of Jesus, a star will, uh, excuse me, a star will depart from Jacob's a scepter will be raised in Israel. It will smash the, what, temples of Moab. You know, the Jews always talk about all the Moabites have got to die. Or the Amorites, I think is what they normally say, but the Moabites as well. You know, but the, the scripture, clearly they're quoting in numbers that that star of Jacob, which was Jesus Christ, was going to smash the temples of Moab. Interesting. Jesus said they were the synagogue of Satan, right? Well, let's take a look at the word synagogue just for a moment. We've got to look at this for a moment. Think about it, right? So I looked up the word synagogue. And... Of course, it is really, they try to put it as three different words. And of course, the word part, they, they get the sin, S-Y-N part of this here, which is together or gathering, bringing together. And then they use the A-G and they try to say that A-G is to drive, to drive together. But I sit there and I look at this, and of course, this is not 100% in what they're saying. It is a Greek word, but you can look at this in many different languages, and the word synagogue still comes down to basically two words. It's a gathering of Gog. The sin and Gog, it is to drive together Gog. Then, another thing that came to, to mind that I wanted to look at and it just so happens it happens to be in the same definition here because of Knesset. And the word Knesset literally is a Hebrew word, is a gathering of Seth. A gathering of Seth. So the Knesset, the political arm in Israel, is called a gathering of Seth. And then you have the synagogue, which was not in, in uh, uh, Hebraic times. It was more in the times of Jesus when that word began to be used. It is a gathering of Gog. So if we have, and, and of course, you know, that's my translation, looking at the two words there. So if we have a gathering of Gog and the Knesset in modern times is a gathering of Seth and then we look going back to the Dead Sea Scrolls and this is what I find interesting here is in the Dead Sea Scrolls when it talks about uh, it says right here the star, they were, they're quoting about the coming of Christ will depart from Jacob, a scepter will be raised in Israel, and I will smash the temples, literally uh, says here, it says, I will smash the temples of Moab, and it will destroy all the sons of Seth. And that used to bug me. 
when I would read this in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and would destroy all the sons of Seth, and will come down from Jacob, and it will exterminate the remnant of the city. Well, interestingly enough, when he speaks about destroying the sons of Seth, maybe it's the legal system of Israel. And the synagogue is the gathering of Gog. I mean, do you see how interesting this really becomes when you really begin to look at the truth of what this could be? So then when we begin to read Ezekiel, saying to Gog, thus saith the Lord God, and in that day when my people Israel dwell safely, shall you not know it? Now, that's interesting in itself. Say unto Gog. In other words, my people are dwelling safely and you don't know it. Of course they know it. They're all amongst them. And, yet, and you shall come from your place out of the uttermost parts of the north. That even itself, when you use the word north, it's uh, to fawn. Um, you know, there is a Hebrew song called Billy Bon... Uh, 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 let's see. Billy Bon Sefante. In, uh, in my heart, I have hidden. The word Tzaphon, the word used for north, is a hidden place. So they come out of a hidden place. You and many people with you and all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. Remember what we spoke about with uh, Rabbi, uh, 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 what is it, Rabbi Sadak, I believe it is, on the History Channel when he says, the help for Israel does not come from heaven, but from inner earth, as he so eloquently puts it. And then we just read over here in Isaiah, it is a battle that takes place and not a battle of humans. See, there it is right there. And, and they literally, they go against him, they go against uh, Ashur, or what we would call modern day Assyria, Syria. But it's not a battle of man. Wow. You know, always I've always been against the fact Israel bombing Damascus because knowing that Syria is the homeland of the matriarchs of Israel, Sarah, uh, uh, Rachel. Bila, Zilpah, all four of the mothers of the Jewish people are Syrians. And then when God talks about the fall of Damascus over in Isaiah, he abrades those who claim the rock for their salvation, which are Christians, and those that have forgotten the God of their salvation, which are the Jews. And he blames them for the demise of Damascus holds them responsible so these are the things i wanted to share with you this morning the stage is being set but the battle is going to be a battle of supernatural proportions so think about it i forget exactly why i had revelation up there that, that one there uh revelation and also going back again to revelation Chapter uh, 20, and this is where we see the Gog of Magog battle once again. And um, mm, this is also where the people are beheaded for the testimony which they hold. This is where Satan is loosed out of his prison. So we know that's why it says in Isaiah, it's not a battle of man. And shall go to see the nations, which are the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is the sand of the sea. Well, different places. Israel's is referred to a lot of times as the sand of the sea in number, but so are also some of these other uh, Nephilim types of peoples on the earth. 
you know, and they went up on the breadth of the earth. Notice that when they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Because we also know that there is a supernatural battle. That's where we also read when you're reading this part in the Dead Sea Scrolls. After it talks about the sentences carried out upon God and, and all of his gathering, then it says, For you shall wage war against them from, he from the heavens and upon them for confusion. The multitude of the holy ones is in heaven and a host of angels and your holy ones dwelling to praise your truth. So it is a supernatural battle on both hands, both sides uh, that we see that ends up taking place here in this final showdown. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. I hope this is a blessing to you. We want to thank you. Uh, right above my head, you can see our website, israelinewslive.org. You can uh, help support the work we do there online or by mail. Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. Thank you and God bless you.